Good morning, everyone. Today is Tuesday, November 10, 2020. My name is Karen Bodenschatz, and I serve as pastor, one of the pastors at First Lutheran Church in Onalaska, Wisconsin, and this is our morning musing. So last week, I saw a Facebook post that has me thinking, and it had nothing to do with politics or the presidential election, which I know, surprising, right? And to be perfectly honest, I saw it and I was like, well, that's interesting. And then kind of moved on because I was in the middle of two really big things. That is um, preparing the confirmation lesson, which is done completely on video now. So that takes about four hours every week. And then also I'm teaching the, a class in our Synod Lay School of Theology. And so I was preparing for that class last week. And so I just didn't really have time to give a lot of thought to this particularly what turns out to be thought-provoking post. Until, until I was sitting in church on Sunday and heard Pastor Stanton read the text that this post was about, this parable of the Ten Bridesmaids. And as he read that, the post came back to my mind and I was like, oh, what? Like totally caught by the Holy Spirit and I have not been able to let it go. And so I thought this would be a perfect topic for the musing for today. So the post by my friend, his name is Mark Mummert. He was a teacher and the seminary musician at seminary when I was in seminary. Um, he posted this question. What if in the parable, he's speaking of the parable of the 10 bridesmaids, God is in the oil, not the rude, tardy bridegroom. I'm just gonna let that sit there for a moment. Now, if you remember, this parable is told by Jesus as an example of what the kingdom of heaven is like. And he, Jesus tells about 10 bridesmaids who are waiting for the bridegroom to come. And all of them fall asleep. Every last one of them falls asleep because the bridegroom is late, right? They're just waiting. And then the bridegroom comes, like is on his way. And so they all wake up, they trim their lamps and five of them realize they don't have enough oil. And five others have enough oil, but won't share. And then the five that have the oil that are ready for the bridegroom are let into the banquet hall and the five who don't have oil are left outside and the door is shut and there might have even been something about wailing and gnashing and teeth in the darkness or that might be this coming week i get these parables in matthew 25 mixed up sometimes it's a it's a hard parable in fact we're entering into a part of mark or matthew that is so hard to interpret, to preach, to think about. So, but Matthew 25 as a chapter of parables is designed to upend our thinking, to upend our thinking about the systems, the unjust systems of our world. And these parables are uncomfortable for us as preachers and for you as listeners, um, for all of us as biblical readers, because we don't ever imagine the kingdom of heaven as anything like the earthly kingdoms that we are a part of. And yet Jesus talks as if they are like, that the kingdom of heaven is like the earthly kingdoms and systems that we have in place here, which doesn't make sense. So as I was reading um, this week, <laughs> the comments on this post, from Mark, I began to think, um, what if taken as a whole, Mark 25, so we take Mark 25 as a whole unit of stories, instead of just splicing them up into one, two, three parables. But then when we take it as a whole, if the last parable, which is the parable of the sheep and the goats, if you remember, Jesus says, welcome you because you took care of me when I was hungry and when I was thirsty. And they're like, when did we do that? And Jesus says, when you did it to the least of these, you did it to me. So what if we took that parable that ends this chapter of parables about the systems of the day 
to interpret the parables that have come before. This wasn't unusual for the gospel writers to do. Um, it is a literary device. Um, so what if that last parable is meant to reinterpret the rest of the parables that come before, like a, like a secret clue as to how we're supposed to think about these? That Jesus would say that we, when we take care of the least of these, we are taking care of Jesus. That the least of these are Jesus in our midst. Which would totally then make sense that Jesus is talking against the systems of the day, especially around marriage and the idea of women in this parable of the bridesmaids. And talking about turning that upside down. It would make perfect sense when we think about the kingdom that Matthew has been talking to us about for the whole of 24 chapters. Instead of trying to shove these parables into our own ideas of how systems are to work. Then these parables become just another call to us to work for justice, to tear down the systems that unfairly favor one group or over another. That's what I've been chewing on this week. And as I was reading through the comments on Mark's post, Heidi Newmark, who is a pastor and a theologian um, and a leader in our church, finished her comments on the post, which was really a mini sermon, um, a call to, to the work that we are called to uh, as people of Jesus, um, has energized me again, which is awesome. She finished off her, her comments with this and I wanted to share it with you. Um, so beloved church, she says, when you have been foolish and when the oil runs low and the wick flickers and even goes out all together and how many of us, this is me speaking, how many of us can see us ourselves in there? When you grow weary, and anxious about having enough, about being enough. You need not run out into the night in despair to find more oil. Christ is here. His love goes ahead of you and before it, no door will ever close. Be well, my friends, be kind for Christ is with you.